Here we are back again to continue with the show, and it's time now for the news review. I'm joined by Samuel Kojo, Brace, an assisting editor here at Joy News. Kojo, Faboom. Yeah. Marche. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Napo me. Me ho ye. Solid yeah. as, as always. Solid as always. Eh? Yeah, na won so dey na. Ah, nyame na do. Eh, obi be say na. Yesterday we had a bit of an interesting confab when I met you at the car park. And <laughs> <laughs> are you are you are you taking my advice? Oh, I am, I am. Eh, yawa. I am, I am. I am, I am. I am. It's very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll not mention what, but Dali. it's it's crucial. Eh, uh, yeah. Very to our ability to continue doing what we do. Eh, papa. My dream when we said no. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, Juma. So yes, come, yes, come. It is well. Hey, but but can I say a bonus thing? Uh, which one? Vandalism. Is that is that vandalism? It? Vandalism. I'm an old vandal, mm. but I don't engage in vandalism. vandalism. You know, vandalism per Commonwealth Hall is very different from mm. the yeah, real no, meaning. No. Okay, uh -huh. vandalism. Okay. Hey, bro, for one another. <laughs> but interesting developments uh, that have been going on, the NDC. Oh, my goodness. And all of that. I mean, <laughs> we've had people tell us, still focus on the economy. Don't think we've forgotten about the economy. Today, when I share my blunt thoughts with you, I'll be going hard on uh, the debt exchange and all of that. And look out for the gifts I promised yesterday for mm -hmm. the education minister, Dr. Yaose Educhum. But we're also talking about the minority end. Quite yeah. some interesting developments in yeah. there. The, the, the papers capture them, so we'll just save that for yeah, when we get into the papers. I have the Ghanaian Times, The Finder, mm -hmm. uh, The New Weekend Crusading Guide. What do you have, Kodi? But, um, okay, I also have the Delhi Graphic, the Delhi Guide, mm -hmm. and the Chronicle. But before you get to the blunt thought and you share some gift for the minister, I think there was an unfortunate comment from him. Hmm. As a leader of a sector where there are so many challenges, and look, when I went to I went to the Western region, I mean the Asan Kragua area, mm -hmm. I went to Hiawa. Hiawa? Yes. Okay. Hiawa is a... So when you did your board year yeah, yeah, yeah. and all of that? Yes, yes. It's Hiawa. in that community as yeah. well? Yes. So but when, from board year to Asan Kragua, you meet Hiawa okay. before you get to uh, Asan Kragua. So that's like the major community. So major body year <coughs> is one, Hiawa is one, and then uh, even... Uh, a Memphi is also okay. one. Uh, Manswa Memphi is also another uh, major community before uh, Asan Kragua. Look, and we'll, be, we'll show that as well as part of the whole uh, school of shame thing. When we are done with the part four, we'll bring this one as, a, as, a, as an adapter. Mm -hmm. There's this school I went into and I was like, what? Children sit under this structure. Look, Ben, you could see the, the block <coughs> falling off. It just hasn't come, but it, it will come like the one on top of the door. Wow. Yeah. I hope it doesn't become another Brimanjama. I, I tell you what. I mean, because we, are, we, we as a group yeah. together with yeah. well-meaning Ghanaians are yeah. trying to resolve the situation there. We hope this doesn't end in yes. another death. I think and it was six school children who died eight. in that one. Eight of them. Yes. I think so. Even my memory is not playing. Uh, Brimanjama was, was six, I, eh? I think it was okay. six. All right, that's fine. Is the recent uh, drowning well, one on eight. the Volta Lake okay. that was eight? Look. The structure I saw that kicked in, I was like, what? How could we allow our children stay in such, such uh, structures? And these are, play even when I was doing the report, at that particular, I mean, that uh, few minutes that I spent, I was, I was so afraid for my life. So if we have, you know, uh, such a thing, you know, there, as, as, as I saw, mm. and journalists are bringing that up to, uh, for, for, for you to then address them, and as the minister of that sector, you get such an opportunity and the only thing you can say is to chastise the, mm. the journalists and the media house for doing the lot work. If your attention hadn't been drawn to that and someone is saying, I've used my resources, we've taken our cameras, yes. logistics, human resource, we've gone there and done the work you should be doing. I'm not sure. And we're telling you that, mm. oh, uh, uh, Minya, this, 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 this is what is... Give them attention. You rather turn around, mm. and and I'm not surprised. Mm. From parliamentarians to mm. academics to everybody has chastised him. Yeah, yeah. I found it even more. Um, sometimes I just try to season the words. The PRO also came here. Mm -hmm. Chrissy Kwating. 
trying to, to trying say, to defend. Which, which, I, I, it's a good thing I didn't have a conversation that I, conversation with him yesterday. I didn't because understand. Because I think I would have simply mm. lost it, Kojo. If if these mm. were the children mm -hmm. of these people in officialdom, mm. would they be singing the same tune? No, I I think they have not seen what we have seen, because like I said, the the structure I saw. If I were the minister or even the district uh, education officer, I may probably, um, if I know I cannot solve it, I have to just leave. Because it's a shame. It's a big shame that in 2022, 2023, we still have school children schooling under very, you know, dangerous structures. Structures that can come down at any moment in time. And we have children, that children as, as young as three, four, why do we do this to ourselves? And if a minister say, look at these children, are they coming from schools of shame? These are few. And, 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 and who says that even where they are coming from, their structures are good? If they are intellectually you know, sound, it doesn't mean that they are, they, are, they are sitting under very good structures. It doesn't. So his, his comment of the fact that I was ashamed because we are trying to put up the ills, has he forgotten that we were the same people who were showing some of the things he was doing as a deputy minister. Has he forgotten that we've been shown here tech things that people are doing? Every you, Thursday, let's, let's, we bring tech innovations that young people when he was, are doing. When, when the that, STEM schools. Uh -huh. you know, yeah, yes. Everything to do mm -hmm. with the STEM schools. In yeah. fact, the very G-STEP event mm -hmm. he was at, mm -hmm. who was covering that? I mean, who has been advertising that? Who has been pushing that? And in fact, let me even say this. Mm. Sometimes we skirt the issues. Some of our media entities, like ours, mm. spoke about everything he was talking about mm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. In a way, I feel we even contributed to the attention he got, yeah. making him a the candidate minister. for education minister. Mm -hmm. Today, he bites the very finger yeah, yeah, yeah. that, you know, it's gave him food. It's unfortunate. I think that having, you know, re having reflected uh, over his comment, I'm sure he has had uh, a change of mind. A change way. of what? If he that's has, my problem with should, African leaders. Should, even should. when even <laughs> when they know mm. Charlie Wade, yeah, my yeah. they yeah. will keep they, they will keep quiet. But he should he should let people say, oh I was I was you know that's an unfortunate comment. Because we, having, we all get carried uh, away uh, at exactly the point. exactly because look you cannot look at children who are who are living in such conditions and lambast journalists for bringing that out. You, you tell me, you know, he says, oh, these ones here, the G-step mm. ones, schools of fame. How many schools of fame do we have? Take out the private institutions, mm. let's go yeah. public. And yeah. you tell me, Mr. Minister, how many schools of fame how do many? we have? Mm -mm. I, I'm not sure he travels widely. Because oh, I can, how can you say that? I, no, I, but why, why well, would well, I say Are you that? saying within Ghana or outside and of Ghana? Yeah, within, because he's always touting. No, no. I, I found it interesting no, no, no. that day. I'm talking about within Ghana. He, he, was, he was there and he I, I, I spent 12 US. years in the mm. US doing this no, no, no. and another 12 mm. years, Masa. But in it's Ghana. It's not the tenure. It's what you can do with oh. what you supposedly acquired. It's not about the talk. Mm. You know, nowadays I'm beginning to wonder when Alan Chemartin came off and mm. said, NATO, mm. no action, talk only. Mm. I'm now beginning to look microscopically at a lot I of these ministers, and I realize, no, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm saying a lot of these ministers, mm -hmm. and I'm beginning to realize that a lot of them are NATO in that uh, no action, talk only. We, we, we have to give him the list, and probably go to the communities and shoot videos. If, but you, I'll go, tell if you, you go to this community, this is how the structure is. Go to this mm. community, this is how the structure is. This community, this is how the structure is. So mm. that he will look at them and, and feel that, hey, then I was wrong. I, didn't, I don't know Ghana very well. Maybe he doesn't. If we are starting from where I know, I mean, in the Hunter, I know Hunter is very well. I can mention the communities and tell him how the structures are there. Maybe yeah. he has to go there and, yeah. and, and find out. That, I think you know. the education minister has done well for this country. You know why? Oh. Mm -hmm. By his arrant attitude mm -hmm. on this matter, I think he's given us a jab in the arm mm. to expose more yeah, 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 yeah. of these. Mm -hmm. So we'll bring those schools mm -hmm. of fame, mm -hmm. his schools of fame, yeah. we'll go around the country and bring them in his face, mm. and then he'll tell us how famous. He, he Maybe he doesn't understand our job. Look, man, this small boy who had a tube in his stomach, Yeah, we did the story. That, was, that's, that, that wasn't a good story, isn't it? In, in quote, in his own way, in his uh, uh, um, uh, you know, view, it wasn't a good story. But we got people to bring money, and today, this boy is on the way of you know getting healed of that particular. If God, God gives us the mercies and grace for him to go through the surgery successfully and heal, he would have come out of it, isn't it? Is it not the job of a journalist bringing that up to, to get people to say, let's, let's turn our attention to that so that he could get uh, you know, healed? 
you know, when we did the school of shame, I'm, I'm told that people started calling from US and co to see how they can help. What does he think that uh, we have to sit and be bringing only the small, the few school of uh, fame in his, in his, in his uh, own words? Uh, so that, and then what? So we leave the, the ones that are suffering. He doesn't understand our job. Our job is to tell the story the way they are. And, and then he should be ready because, like you said, we'll go in and then bring more of those. And, and this and, is why, just to wrap, I don't keep politicians as friends. I always <laughs> tell, no, that's my policy. <laughs> NDC and PP, they'll tell you. Mm. You can be my acquaintance. We can have conversations and, you know, oh, this is what, mm. but I don't keep politicians too close because mm. I don't want you to get too close to the point where if your mata come where they bash I, I, you I, I cannot talk about uh -huh. it. That's, that's my policy. Yeah. I don't know about others, but mm. that's just the way it is. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Let's get into the papers. Yeah, yeah, now. yeah. We have some mm. what? Uh, let me see. Plus or minus about some 20 minutes. Yeah, Let's yeah, make sure. the most of, sure. of it. Okay. Now, Council of State explores ways, oh, and that's the daily graphic. Mm -hmm. Council of State explores ways to reduce debt exchange impact. Minority leadership reshuffle. Dr. Atu Forsen calls for calm, former leadership petitions, elders. The matter chop hot. Very hot. <laughs> Suspected po food poisoning. Watcher kills 540 others affected. Eesh. Okay. And uh, there's this on the constituency watch, San Erigo, host of major educational institutions by Christ for Development. Now, let me bring a matter that is of interest to a lot of us. Uh, the debt exchange program and see what the uh, Council of State is doing. Now, it says the Council of State has engaged the Institute of Chartered Accountant, uh, Ghana, and the Ghana Association of Bankers to enable it to make suitable recommendations to the government on measures to reduce the impact of the domestic debt exchange program, DDEP. The Council gave the assurance that it would, in line with its mandate, continue to engage institutions and groups and make the necessary recommendations so as to find suitable solutions to the country's challenges, including the current financial challenges. In a statement issued yesterday, the Council said the engagement was in view of the urgency and critical importance of the DDEP for a successful conclusion of negotiations with the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the effect on individual and institutional bondholders. Uh, but it looks like we are not. We, we, we won't get out of this uh, any moment soon. But th there's been some progress. I'm told that uh, the bankers, uh, you know, have had some agreement with. You know, they, I think they've they've agreed with government about this whole DDEP program. Mm -hmm. That's why the individual bondholders are saying that. Well, if the institutions have agreed, can you then spare right. the individual bondholders? But um, yesterday, uh, the Individual Bondholders Forum met with the government side mm. and they agreed on certain things. I'm told that recommendation has been then sent to the finance minister right. to either adopt or call the bluff and then we move on to see what, what it is. I mean, they, they've cited so many things. Um, um, mm -hmm. The CAPEX, capital expenditure, among mm -hmm. others, they've had that interaction with Togba mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that happened the yesterday as well. Of the Asogli state mm -hmm. and all of that. It, it is clear that this is going to do a lot of damage. Mm. It is clear. When you hear members of parliament even talk about the issue, you know that this is something that could sink a lot of people. Mm. Many lives are on the line. You yeah. remember our 77-year-old friend. In fact, just yesterday, Bishop Charles Ajinasari, mm -hmm. Parashapo, you follow the story, right? Mm -hmm. So he had an investment mm -hmm. with one of these institutions, bondholder alike, 106,000. He goes to say, you know, I want my money. And do you know what they tell him? <laughs> we can't do that now. The best we can do for you is give you 1,000 CDs a week. Mm. You know, every year has about 53 weeks. So basically, they are telling him, we'll give you 1,000 CDs a week for two years. 1,000? Yes, 106 weeks. That's two years. So they'll give him 1,000 and, and here's every he, week. Yes, here's the, here's the, here's the killer. They are even being charitable to him. So That's what they said? Well, basically, they, they told him, per what he said, that a numpono is a favor they are doing him. Hey! His own money. Okay. So when anyway. it comes to ordinary Joes like us, mm. <laughs> Yabutu. Uh, <laughs> but that's, that's why the individual bondholders are saying that if government carries through with this, it will dampen the investment culture of this country. 
and so we should watch it. Now, what are they recommending? Um, the individual bond loaders say that the government should lend the 900 million US dollars Ghana Heritage Fund mm. to the Bank of Ghana to show up the reserves. Right. They're also saying that we should restructure the fiscal council to include a creditors committee made up of reps mm -hmm. from all investor classes in government of Ghana local bonds and empower the council to be an enforcing and binding institution and not just an advisory body. Mm. So now this body that we've heard about, the council of, you know, the fiscal council, it should not be an advisory. It should be a body with tooth that can bite. Now, uh, this may be a key to ensuring and sustaining the fiscal discipline required to realize our debt sustainability. So those are the, uh, you know, part of the recommendations that they sent to government. Let's see how the finance minister will also react to this. But um, this was an agreement they reached with the, the government side led by Samuel Akest, who is with the Ministry of Finance. So uh, let's see how, how this one uh, goes. But it's interesting where we are with regards to all the hula balu about this uh, debt exchange program. Uh, it all boils down to um, consultation. Yeah. Just like the, what is happening in the minority side. Everything has to do with whether you consulted the parties involved. There are so many things not. you can achieve mm. by talking to people. Mm -hmm. Ghanaians are not some, uh, this is not an intractable conflict of, of any sort. Ghanaians are very understanding. But when you take us for granted, mm -hmm. then sometimes, and you know, there's, there's a certain warped logic that I don't get. You tried something with previous, you know, policies like the e-levy. Mm. People said to you, you know what, you should try and do it this way. No, 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 no. In the end, you're practically coming back. Mm. DDE, try and do it this way. Oh, no, 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 no. In the end, you're practically coming back. Mm. I mean, I don't know what it would take for people to listen or as though it were. And you see, when you do that, you also create a scenario where people now think, okay, so everything that comes up, this is the way to go. You bully us, we bully you back. We twist your arm mm. and then you respond. Mm. When you do that, you hobble your own governance systems mm. because every little thing you do, now people will, you know, be very aggressive towards mm. it. Mm. Because people think you're taking them for granted. Yeah. It, 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 it's something that should teach every government, or this government, and subsequent ones, a lesson. That they will learn nothing, trust me. Well, at least this I mean, administration I, I, has shown exactly. it learns I mean, nothing. from the E-Levy thing to where we are. But I hope that going forward, something can change. Um, you know, the, the same individual bondholders forum, um, wrote a, a statement and said that um, we have taken note of the joint press release by the Ministry of Finance and the Ghana Association of Bankers dated blah blah. We we think that once the bank, the Association of Bankers and the government of Ghana have reached an agreement, spare us because ours is just eleven percent of the whole thing. Let's see how it goes. But um, let me finish this or conclude this one on the minority uh, fracas. Now, the new minority leader in Parliament, Dr. K. Salatu Fawson, has appealed to the rank and file of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, not to dwell too much on the recent reshuffle in the parliamentary leadership of the party. Rather, party members should focus on what the new leadership in Parliament will do to complement the effort of the party to better the lot of the people of Ghana. And he's promising to lead with integrity. But, man... That's also another thing that has, to talk, that has to do with the attitude of the Ghanaian. We never consult in this sense because the other side is saying that you didn't consult us. But I wonder how they can do such a major thing without consulting anybody. You know, the parliamentarians are of the view that you need to consult us because there's a way we have to elect leadership of the House. The, the, the standard pr uh, practice should be that we, the caucus, will propose and then the party will bless it. Uh, I don't, I don't think that is standard practice. Well, well no. Actually, it according isn't to, standard according practice. According to the but, MPs. But some consultation. According to the MPs, what they, what they, they were con talking about on their own platform. Mm. I am not an MP, but if they are wrong, then I'm also wrong. Mm. According, according to Because them. we've actually spoken about these matters. Trust well, me, that's not how... It, in fact, when well, Haruna himself, mm -hmm. together with his team, were Changed coming it. in... Oh, okay. Then uh, it means that some of them... It's not necessarily... Because one, some of the MPs wrote on mm. uh, you know, sources that we've gotten that, look, we, the, the caucus, should decide mm. on this number of people that we want them to be the leadership, and then the, they will take it to the party for the party to bless us. There's a lot to again, dispute that. But, but, again, but, but the point to be made mm -hmm. is that there could have been a lot a of lot. consultation. Mm -hmm. But whatever it that's is. Most if it, if it, because they said that at, when they met in 2021 and they took a decision about, about leadership, they said that 
going forward, there will be that deeper consultation. You will come to us for us to then be in the know of everything that's happening. So for this to happen, that just after when we, we met in 2021 to discuss this, and in 2023, you are changing leadership without consulting us. It was just damned on us. That's, so, so there's a group that says that we will not agree. Even yesterday, Kletos Avaka was saying that the old leadership are still the leaders because parliament is, is on recess. We'll, we'll see, see how that pans out. Exactly, exactly. We'll see how that pans out. Very interesting. Yeah. Let's get into the Ghanaian Times newspaper very quickly. APRO and NDC as minority leadership uh, changes. That story we've been bringing to you, Dr. Atto Forsen, calls for calm, promises to unite party for 2024 electoral victory. Wasinia High Technical School records two fire outbreaks in 24 hours. At the Africa Prosperity Dialogue, develop solutions needed mm. to deepen intra-African trade. That's according to the Vice President. I like the way in Ghana we're always looking at, let's try to do, let's try to do. We never do. Two granted two million Ghana City bail for alleged robbery. Let's look at the Wasinia High School issue, especially as we've looked at uh, the politics of the NDC. We've spoken at length about it. Page 24 is what we're, is it page 24? Is it? Because, uh, okay, so it's on the back page, actually. Nearly 24 hours after fire engulfed five dormitories at the Wasinia High Technical School in the Upper West region, on Monday, two more dormitories at the school were raised down by another fire on Tuesday evening. The second fire, which started around 8 p.m., caused great panic among the students. In an interview with the media on Tuesday, the girls' prefect of the school, Winifred Kogani, uh, said they had gone to learn in the evening when they heard some of the girls screaming for help. She said the timely arrival and intervention of officers of the Ghana National Fire Service prevented the fire from spreading to other parts of the dormitory. That's uh, all the belongings of the students in the affected two rooms were burnt, she said. Mm. And they couldn't recover anything. Uh, that's, that's, that's the situation uh, there. Businesswoman fined uh, 600 Ghana cities for building in marshy area. That story on page three. A businesswoman, uh, Josephine Amekou, has been fined by a Hohoi magistrate's court for building in a marshy area without development permit. Amekou pleaded guilty and was convicted on her own plea. She will pay 600 Ghana cities or in default serve six months in prison. She is also to pay 500 Ghana cities as compensation to the Hohoi Municipal Assembly. I had to bring this up highlighted because... We're approaching the rainy season again. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll start with all of yeah. these. And da -da 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 -da. Oh, and yeah. uh, buildings on waterways and all mm. of that. And in places they shouldn't mm. be. And other people will suffer. I'm mm. glad they've started this. But I am again pointing out, at the start of the year, I was mentioning, or was it late last year? What are we going to do? It's going to be another cycle. Mm. The rains come. People get affected. There's flooding. Mm -hmm. Some people may lose their lives. Then we go back to it and government will step in and we're going to do this and dredging <laughs> and da, 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 da. the media will take it up mm -hmm. for two weeks, one month, mm -hmm. and then we we're go gone. back yeah. to the same mm. vicious cycle. Yeah. It, it's good this is, this is coming up. I pray that we go after the bigger fishes. Mm. Because look, I, I can talk of the Western region because I know the terrain quite well. There are bigger facilities in waterways. Mm that have caused a lot of flooding incidents in the past few years. Nobody is able to, to touch them because these are bigger people. I mean, I'm sure this one, 600 cities, maybe because of... 1,100 in all. If, probably looking at how, he, how she is. I don't know the, the structure. Maybe some two-bedroom or whatever house. Look. I don't know if, whether the structure will be brought down because... From what I gather, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, no, I'm not fully an expert mm -hmm. on this. Mm -hmm. I'm no expert, in fact, but... If, if they're going to do this, then the structure mm. probably should come down as well. If you go to the Western region, you remember last year, mm -hmm. there was flooding incident at a school called St. Mary's. Mm -hmm. It was heavily reported in mm. Ghana. It used not to be the case until a businessman came to put up a facility mm. in a swampy area there. Mm. In front of St. Mary's. Yes, right. in front of St. Mary's, there used to be this huge, like a reservoir where the water from the, so the water. exactly collects and then it seeps away gently. Then this businessman blocks it. He's not allowed to construct any drain underneath the structure. This is a heavy building, big one. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, is it a factory of some sort? It's, a, it's a, a logistics house, you know, hub. So we have these machinery there, all the machines you can think about, the trucks you can think about, they are there. So it's a big place. 
Now he doesn't construct any uh, 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 drains underneath the structure such that the water can still have a way to go. And so when the, the rain falls, where is it going to collect? It doesn't. So it has to collect on the, on the road. And that's why we're having that incident. People were walking how many hours? Like three hours from Takwadi to get to their communities because flooding, um, a cars cannot move. Yeah. You know, so really, if we are doing this, we should go after these So people. one person. One. You see the problems e exactly. that have been created. And you, when you go into it, mm -hmm. you will definitely find some political elements, mm. some oh, technocrats yeah. sure. who are backing this sure, person, sure, 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 sure. allowing him to sure. get away with murder, sure. so to speak, because mm. he, this act mm -hmm. is affecting lives. Yeah. And three years ago, the assembly went to just open the drain in front of the structure. It didn't work. Because look, the place is big. You cannot open that small drain yeah. to, say, to, to make way or to replace that huge space that he has, he has occupied. And for the first mm. time, three years ago, I think, that school, St. Mary's Boys, had its wall breaking off when the rain fell. Because, yeah, because over time, if exactly. the water keeps battering it, and, and nobody it will fall. So once we're chasing this one, the Western Union Authority should go after that man and, and all the other people who have built in waterways. There are people... Here's what I'm going to suggest to mm. you, Kodjo. Mm -hmm. Let's take our cameras. It works. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. You see, you see what... We'll, we'll do it. Let's uh, pepper them. We'll, we'll do it. Because look, take yeah. your cameras. Mm -hmm. Let's go there and mm -hmm. do this. That You see, I've come to realize mm -hmm. that's the only language our yeah. leaders understand. Yeah. Or I, I should say our misleaders. That's the only <laughs> language they understand. You put, uh, you put the spotlight mm -hmm. on them. They feel uncomfortable. They are forced mm -hmm. to do the right thing. That's and, the and, only and, language and, they And just, just within the last three years, another space between Mpenton, um, and in Chaban Junction, that's a circle junction, mm. they filled another space on your left and they've put up the same, another structure like that there. That place, water collected there because uh, it's between two hills. They filled it and they've built another structure. Ask yourself, when it rains, where will the water go? So we know what we're doing. We look on and create the problems. Mm -hmm. I'm happy they are doing this to, to someone and said, that serves her right. Let's go after the big ones. We have also constructed bigger structures in, in bigger, big, bigger uh, waterways. Mm. Mm. We have some, what, three minutes uh, okay. thereabouts. Let's okay. look at some other stuff. Now, Delhi guy, Dr. Baumia proposes strategies to transform Africa. NDC boils over Haruna Muntaka and Azatu Forcing takes over. Fresh charges for GPHA managers killers. Or for Swampo for Kwekubuahin to open the fans. So that's it. I think that, uh, okay, so a, a, a bit on Dr. Ma ba Baumia's thing. Uh, now, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has proposed three areas for African political and business leaders to prioritize in their quest to transform Africa into an economic powerhouse on the global stage. Delivering the keynote address at the maiden edition of the African Prosperity Dialogue, which is currently taking place at the Safari Valley Resort in the Eastern Region, the Vice President counseled African business and political leaders to, as a matter of priority, make smart investment in critical infrastructure across the continent, unleash the productive capacity of the continent onto the world, while mobilizing finance and investment to bridge the infrastructural gap currently pl plaguing the continent. According to the Vice President, with the narrative about Africa for most uh, part of the world sadly being about poverty, conflict, misgovernance, uh, conflict, and then this one, misgovernance, <laughs> um, uh, corruption and underdevelopment, the time has come for Africa and Africans to define our own narrative, insisting, quote, we cannot allow poverty and underdevelopment to be the destiny of Africa, a continent so blessed with every natural resource, unimaginable oil, gas, minerals, and sunshine. It begs the question, when are we going to move from just talking to action? Yeah. Mm. Or are we going to remain NATO? Uh, no yeah, action yeah, talk yeah, only. Yeah. The final newspaper now, very quickly. I, I find this a bit, so we've spoken about <clears throat> that committee proposing ways that government can save 83.5 billion Ghana cities. Let me quickly get to that story. So a technical committee set up by... Uh, government has made over 20 proposals comprising expenditure cuts and revenue generation measures that have the potential of yielding net savings of 83.5 billion Ghana cities. The IBF, um, the IBF holds the position that the proposals, that is the individual bondholders, are competent enough to urgently address the fiscal challenges and enable us to reach the desired 55% uh, debt to GDP ratio target proposed to the IMF. So they talk about expenditure cut measures, cutting statutory funds to save 7 billion Ghana cities, cutting ministers' MDAs uh, off to save 6.5 billion Ghana cities, reviewing free SHS to save 1 billion Ghana cities. We're not spending so much, but we can still cut if possible. Revenue measures uh, to save 104 
uh, million, then 3.6 billion from oil production, 5.6 billion from yet to be tapped oil fuels. It goes on and on. Even 3.6 billion from fully enforcing that. All of those are there on page two. But just to wrap, this is a heartwarming one. Mm. Alpha Lotto I gifts was, I was, I was to I was going to come to that. 50,000 yeah. Ghana yeah, yeah. as government. Mm. fails to reward him for winning under 20 football world cup and i'm not just saying this administration but mm. the promise was made to him and was not fulfilled no administration has fulfilled it alpha lotto has stepped in to do something for him i still think government can do something for him else if we treat people who win laurels for our country like this who would want to do anything for ghana remember ignatius is it geza remember that lady I think she was also a triple jumper or something of the sort. I, I, was it Bisa? Mita, Bisa also won some gold for Ghana. Because, because I think at a point she, she was... Yeah, there was some controversy. But Geza left. Okay. He, he left and was competing for the Netherlands because mm. that was where he had been based. Mm. And, you know, I, I felt so pained. He was injured. He had situations. You want others to use their money to take care of him. Mm. But for him to come and compete for your country. Yeah. And even sometimes calling these people, yeah. oh, I'm checking on you. Yeah. And you expect me to come and compete. So Alpha Lotto Limited, an operator in the lottery and games industry, has donated a cash amount of 50,000 CDs to FIFA Under-20 World Cup winning coach Celesteta, popularly known as Bobo. Apart from the coach, uh, apart from the cash, the company donated some bags of rice, bottles of water, mackerel, and oil to support the coach. On October 17, 2009, 10-man Ghana beat Brazil 4-3 on penalties after there were no goals in 120 minutes of action. You all know it. Let me not bore you with the story. But that is it. And um, at least some respite coming to uh, Bobo. The new weekend crusading guide, prioritize investment and in smart infrastructure. Veep, uh, just yeah. African leaders at mm -hmm. Hu Summit. And uh, Adum Group boss attributes uh, feats to professionalism and hard work of staff, mm. all of those are there. Those are the stories I, I have for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chronicle says, Muntaka strips mosquito, uh, Fifi quitted naked, suspected killers of GPHA boss freed by court, uh, Baumia advocate for smart investment in critical infrastructure. And I, I hope that whatever he has said, African leaders and, and business uh, uh, leaders in Africa will take it up and uh, invest in these areas. Look, agriculture is, is booming, and I hope that we'll put more investment in there to ensure that we really, you know, tap into the potential of, of, of agriculture to enhance the development of this, this continent. We have arable land. We just have to have business people and governments dedicating a lot of cash to it, and, and we're good to go. Rice, a lot of Ghanaians are eating rice. Mm. Let's push money there. Let right. government push incentives there, and mm. we'll just be fine. Uh, let's say so, hi to uh, Mr. Vincent Blechi. Okay. Um, he used to be the board for, he's a former board chair for Huntman Rob Bank. He's watching us now. He says good morning to us. And uh, as always, I love your outfit. <laughs> Who, who's, who's the person behind this? Uh, uh, that's still uh, Abby Trent. Abby Trent. Yeah, so check her out on Facebook. Solid girl. Yeah. Abby Trent. Yeah. Mine is uh, Catherine Gordon. Gordon, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Of Catherine Garments. Uh, though this is a wooden outfit mm -hmm. she actually did some work on it so okay, yeah. i'll credit her with the work <laughs> that had to be done but my blunt thoughts for you today will be titled um is titled i should say ghana's pharisaic misleaders heaping burdens upon the backs of the masses that they themselves cannot carry ghana's pharisaic uh, leaders or misleaders heaping burdens upon the backs of the masses that they themselves cannot carry look forward to that one right after sports and today it's the second part of that interaction with former Black Stars coach Akwesi Apia. Sports, up next.